real estate school hello hello this message or this video is for mr sean ramirez sean had posted a question inside of real estate school and that question is first deal help hell yeah sean we're happy you are here and a part of real estate school my friend uh, i want to make a quick video because this is a longer post and it's just going to be easier for me to just send you a video my man so welcome thank you for being here uh your question was i have a seller who is family his attachment to the property has allowed some distress and no motivation because in his words it's not hurting him having a vacant property okay so i'm assuming that this is one of your family members um that's what i'm assuming if things are different let me know um having not it's ha, ha, whenever he would say it's not hurting him having a vacant property first and foremost before i go any further i would agree hey it's not hurting you to have a vacant property i get it but i would also remind him that there is a cost to own a vacant property you have property taxes annually you have insurance on that property which is typically going to be either a monthly or an annual cost you're having a sewer bill on that property as well so these are some things that you may want to keep in mind that you can mention uh, to let him know that yeah it's not hurting you sure i agree i get that but it is costing you taxes insurance and sewer bills are typically things that you're not going to be able to avoid and if he doesn't have insurance i would also recommend him or her uh, that not having insurance is super risky and if something were to happen a fire a tornado an earthquake a flood you know somebody breaking in and tearing up the property vandalism that is going to cost him money so these are some things that i always want to mention to people that have a vacant property all right that being said i've been able to get him to agree on a range he would be willing to sell at awesome very very cool good work the concerns that i'm having are capital gains well he is going to have capital gains tax assuming that he has a gain there's really not going to be a way around that unless you want to get creative and you wanted to do some sort of you know 1031 where he would take those gains and roll them into another property all right uh, you could dampen those those gains if you were to owner finance that property from him so let's say that you were to buy this property and pay him over you know three years or five years or ten years well you could actually cut those capital gains down by paying him over time that can be an option for you but it's really going to depend on you know your and him i'm assuming it's a it's a guy here but your you and them him or hers you know approach on those capital gains all right no motivation i get it sometimes people are, are not going to be motivated time typically heals that but again that's why i always like to kind of circle back on it's not hurting him to have a vacant property sure but it is costing you so that can sometimes help them become motivated or at least more motivated in the event that you can explain to him yeah i get it it's not hurting you but it is costing you taxes insurance sewer maybe he also has trash bills and utilities having to cut the grass i mean these are expenses they add up it may not seem like a lot for a week or two but over the course of a year or two i mean this can be several thousand like four or five six thousand dollars to own the property all right so that can maybe help with the motivation otherwise just circle back and follow up and check in with this particular person often and let them know that you are going to be here to help them when they are ready to sell all right and getting him what he wants and possibly more well that's really just going to depend if those numbers work for you so obviously i love paying people uh, what they want for a property if they are reasonable with that number if they are not reasonable with that number then that just doesn't really work but if they are reasonable with that number then yes get him what he wants or possibly more sometimes you can pay more in the event that they're willing to finance the property to you right they can allow you to pay them over 5 10 15 years well you might be able to pay him property because it's less money out of pocket all right so getting to your actual question here question what kind of dispo options can i propose to him to make him more motivated and how can i limit capital offer him a deal he can't refuse well the dispo options you know typically from the hip here are going to be pretty pretty simple right you're going to be able to offer him a cash offer that's going to be the easiest for him it's going to be an as-is offer a cash offer 
um, and an offer that you're going to be able to close, close relatively quickly. However, that cash offer is going to typically be the lowest offer. So maybe you could propose him some owner financing options. Now, the sky's the limit. There's literally unlimited amount of owner financing options that you can propose to him. If capital gains are a big issue, then that might be a good route to take. Uh, but typically speaking, if somebody's going to be willing to owner finance me a property and let me pay them, you know, principal and interest, I'll do that for five or 10 years. No problem. I really prefer when somebody will sell me a property and there's no interest at all. And I can just make principal payments over five, 10, maybe even as many as 20 years in some cases. So you really just need to have a conversation to kind of see what makes a win-win for you and for him. You as the buyer and an investor and a member of real estate school, you don't want to overpay, right? You want to be able to get the best possible price that you can. And if this particular individual isn't motivated to sell, you know, at a, at a discount or offer some sort of owner financing to you, then it just might not work today. And that's okay. Follow up. Time typically heals all things. Um, I'm not just interested in wholesaling it because if I can, I would like to use the property as a stepping stone into flipping contracts so that I can start doing more flips um, on my own. I'm not just interested in wholesaling it because if I can, I'd like to use this property as a stepping stone into flipping flipping or contracts so that I can start doing more flips on my own. I had to read that twice. I think because I have mentioned this to him, he has reluctantly given me somewhat of a green light. Yeah. Don't mention wholesaling or flipping, you know, to the seller typically. Now you want to be transparent on what your goals would be, but you know, I never want to just use the word wholesaling specifically with a seller. Um, if anything, I just want to try to solve their problems. It doesn't seem like this particular individual has a ton of problems, but I would just want to reinforce that there's a cost and I can at least minimize that cost. And at the end of the day, I can get some money in your pocket. Even if you have to pay some capital gains, wouldn't you rather have 20, 30, 50, hundred thousand dollars in your bank account than this, this vacant property. That's kind of a risk, especially if you don't have insurance on it. So I'm just spitballing here, but these are definitely some things that come to mind with, you know, with your statement here. All right. Um, you're never going to be able to flip a property or wholesale a property if you don't get properties under contract. So having this be a good stepping stone property, I agree with, but you got to get this family member, right? This particular person to agree to sell it to you, to be able to do any of these things, keeping it as a rental is an option, using the bird method, doing some updates and then refinancing your money out's an option, buying it with cash is an option, buying it with creative finance is an option. Again, the sky's the limit with creative financing. And we're going to go over creative financing, you know, very soon on one of the Wednesday night coaching calls. We'd love to have you on those calls. You also provided some details, estimated ARVs around 220. It's a three, two, it's a 1950s home. It needs some roof repairs and it needs a new HVAC. That's actually good for you as an investor for a fix and flip a wholesale or a Burr rental because it gives you the ability to actually increase the value of this property and do some value add. So no big deal that it needs a roof. That could be somewhere between guessing here, but you know, seven to 10 grand. HVAC is gonna be somewhere around four to 5,000 typically for your typical home. Um, and probably some electrical and lipstick and mascara. I love that. I don't think I've ever put mascara on a house. I get it. I'm just joking with you. Some lipstick, of course. Um, but that's great. If there's some lipstick, some upgrades, some painting, some trim, some landscaping, some tree removals, fence line cleaning, whatever it may be. Also very, very good opportunity for you to do value add. So one thing I want to mention is, is that you might want to consider doing a Burr method deal on this where you can buy this, you can do some upgrades and, and then you go to the bank and you refinance it and you pull your money out. I'd encourage you to learn how to use private or hard money so you can do this with none of your own money. And, and I say that meaning you could purchase it and rehab it and then refinance all that back in the event that you were to use private or hard money. Probably a C or even a D class neighborhood, no problem. The majority of our rentals are in C classes. We're also doing some seller finance on the exit side in D class neighborhoods now. Uh, we refer to those as slow flips. It's basically just seller financing. So no problem there. Any and all help is appreciated. I appreciate you being here and asking this question. Thanks in advance, thank you. So hopefully this video will give you a little bit of insight. Uh, lots of options. We have the ability to get creative. But the main thing that I would want to suggest to you is just have a conversation, right? Learn more about it. See if you can convey to him 
that, yeah, it's not hurting him owning it, but it is costing him money. How long has it been vacant? Well, do some math. Well, that maybe cost you three grand or six grand or 10 grand to own this for a year or two or three if it's just been sitting there vacant. Wouldn't you rather have cash in your bank today? If capital gains are an issue, slow down paying him. Pay him over three years or five years or something like that. Um, so all the above sounds good. Estimated ARV around 220, 32. That's a great type of home. People love three bed, two baths. 1950 home is great. And the fact that it needs a little bit of repairs can also make uh, for you make for a good deal for you to be able to flip it either via fixing it or just flipping the contract. And that's called wholesaling. Um, personally, when I see your notes here, ARV 22032 needs a roof and HVAC, some lipstick and mascara in a CRD neighborhood. I think Burr method, this screams Burr method. This screams rental to me. So if you're not interested in doing a rental, that's fine. You can maybe wholesale this to somebody like me who would do the Burr method and would acquire it as a rental. Or maybe you would also want to consider that yourself. So hopefully that helps. Looks like there's some other comments down here. I'm going to post this right now um, on the um, in the school group as my video comment. Um, hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions. And hopefully we see you soon on one of the coaching calls on Wednesday nights. Thanks, buddy.